in the Old Testament it says that when all things are revealed, men will look at Satan and say, is this the one that deceived the whole world? Is this the one? Him? He's called uh, the one that deceived the whole world in Revelation too, if I remember right. And I wondered before, I have wondered years ago, well, there's Muslims and there's this and there's that. How has he deceived everybody? They don't even believe the same thing. But there's one thing they all believe. All of them. One thing. And that is that the religion of Christianity represents Christ. They all believe that, even if they hate the religion. They believe it. That is the lie that has deceived the whole world. And because millions believe that, they don't even, they don't even want anything to do with Christ. Because if that represents Him, I don't want anything to do with Him. And they don't ask, God, where are you? Yeah. All of those hundreds, I don't know how many hundreds of books, articles, all the internet, all the articles that I've read, I've never found one that didn't believe that. I've never out they all talk about Christianity beginning beginning with Jesus and his apostles. And that religion could not be more contrary to Christ than it is. Yes. As I'm writing this Iron Kingdom book, I came on the third chapter of the apostasy of the body of Christ, and I've been working on that for a good while, on and off for years. And I, I knew the key was the ceremonial thing. When they left the Spirit, there was nothing left but... Yeah. something symbolic something something to do when they left Paul's gospel that's all that's there but you're not going to worship God in spirit and in truth you got to do it in symbols in ceremony something and when I finished I thought I was finished with that chapter it's like the Lord to point that had a VA what about holy places I'd left that out so for the last uh, six months, I don't know how many months, I've been trying to fit holy places into the chapter on the apostasy of Christ and all the ceremonies. And I've just come to the conclusion today, really, it's got to be its own chapter because it, it, it does explain the birth of Christianity as opposed to Christ and His ways. You cannot... You cannot talk about holy places unless you talk about churches. Mm. People call them ha the house of God. Yeah. And you cannot talk about them without talking about the Emperor Constantine and what he did. He is the originator of the religion of Christianity. Christianity began with Constantine, not with Christ. Let's see if I can explain it. Because it's, it's as clear as a bell to me. Now, if you, I asked this of uh, Betty and Earl and Sandy and Samantha at supper the other night. If you were just got on a horse or a mule and rode around ancient Israel all over the hills of of Judea and Samaria and wherever, how many temples of God would you have seen? Just one. There wasn't but one. They had high places here and there and altars here and there, but there was just one temple of God. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you went out of the borders of Israel and got around to Greece or even Asia Minor and eventually to Rome? How many temples would you see? Many. I've been in uh, Pompeii, been in Rome. How many temples did you see over there, Richard? A lot. The leftovers of temples were everywhere. And they all got along with each other. 
if you preferred the temple of Jupiter, or also called by the Romans Yahweh, if you were to, it was okay, you wanted to go over there, uh, what's his name, Odysseus or Ulysses, uh, his, fa his patron god was Athena, and she gave him, made him real smart. He's the one who came up with the, uh, the horse, well, the, the Trojan horse. It was his idea with Athena's help, they said. And one temple could be right there, and another one right there, and it was okay, whatever you preferred. Mm -hmm. Maybe you wanted to go to the goddess of fortune and make a sacrifice or an offering so that she would help you with the next horse race you wanted to bet on. <coughs> It was, it was something for everybody. That was the entire pagan world. All over the world. Temples were just a dime a dozen. Some magnificent, some smaller. One of the original temples in Rome is at the end of the forum down there by the river. Temple of Hercules. Small building, round building. But... That was fine if you wanted to go down and make a sacrifice. Good. That's good. I'm glad you're doing that. Everybody was all right with all of it. But God never had but one mm -hmm. in Israel. He never, there's never been on earth but one holy building. And God sent His Son to fulfill what that was a pattern of. Not but one. Constantine, for whatever reason, saw a benefit in getting believers, they were backslidden, but they, they, were, they were apostate, but they, they talked about Jesus. He saw the organ, the, them submitting to the bishops and getting along better than the Roman Empire. It was so big now, it's about to burst like a balloon when you blow it up. And he wanted to combine that religion with everything he'd always known. And so he started putting it all together. Now, when I say all those temples, another word for those temples is church. Church is not a Christian word. Muslim mosque is a church. Hebrew temple, Hindu temple, they're churches. A church is just a building dedicated to a God. Doesn't matter which one. If it's dedicated to a God, it is a church. All of ancient pagan religion all over the ancient world was church-based religion. Now, if you walk around, you ride around Burlington, you ride around North Carolina, you ride around Sacramento, California, you ride around Louisville, Kentucky, what do you find? To this God, or to that God, or to this God, or to that God. And it doesn't matter that people call it Jesus. Paul said there were a lot of Jesuses, and a lot of spirits, and a lot of gods. But he wanted God's people to stick with the real Jesus. Know you not that your bodies are the temple of God? The only holy place God has ever had as a temple was in Jerusalem. And he, Jesus told the woman at the well, she was arguing you could worship all these other places. And, and she said, you Jews say Jerusalem's the only place. And he said, hey, let me tell you, the time is almost here. Neither in these high places nor in Jerusalem. But God is looking for some people to worship Him in spirit and in truth. <laughs> The religion of Christianity is church-based religion. Yes. Just like the ancient world. Only it's been, the names have been changed to disguise things. There's a genius behind it all. There's a spirit behind it all. And it's the whole thing is false. We're talking about Constantine, and I'm lear still learning remarkably about him. I ran into this website the other day that had all the imperial laws of Rome from Constantine's time down past Theodosius on to Justinian. All of them that had to do with religion. Now Constantine is called Constantine the Great by Christians. That's his title. Great Christian Emperor. He never believed in Jesus. 
the Son of God that was born of a virgin. He never got the Holy Ghost. He never believed in that. He talked about God a lot, a lot, and and the Holy Christ or the Holy. But Jesus, Jesus said, "They're going to hate you because of my name." He combined his number one God was the Son God. He worshipped Him before he had this big conversion that Christians made up years after he died. Never told about it while he, died, while he was alive. Made that up. He, he worshipped that sun god. Had him on his coins years after his supposed conversion. Even when he made a new Rome for the eastern half of the empire at Constantinople had a ma massive column built for him as the sun god was sitting on, standing on top of it. They found fragments of it. It's over in Rome now. The sun rays coming out of his head is the sun god. It's not the real Jesus. Amen. And when I was going through that website and seeing when each law was published, it struck me so much. The same year the same year he ordered everybody to, to rest from their labors on Sunday, the day of the sun god. He also said that he had consulted the soothsayers to see why lightning struck one of the Capitol buildings. That's the great, the great Christian, the first Christian emperor, Constantine the Great. The whole thing is a lie. Yeah. Now this is what the Lord told me about this. He said up till now, up till now, when you talk about Christianity, there's been something connected with it, with the natural rebellious nature of the flesh. Us against them. But this, to be thoroughly persuaded from the from your marrow that the whole thing is fake has nothing to do with the flesh. It just does something to it. It takes you somewhere. It relieves you of the burden. It's not anything to fight against anymore. It's just nothing. The whole thing is nothing. The whole thing is fake. The whole thing is ancient paganism with a new name. The now the thing is, God, what is in your Holy Ghost? What is on this side? What is on this side of the coin? What do you have for us here? We're out of that. Now what? Now where are you, God? Now are we right? Now what do you want? Now there's truth out there we don't have. God, give it to us. Let us walk in it. What do you do with this? Ah, oh, there's no fight in this. It's like you climbed up this stony mountain and you're standing there it's like, well, okay, this is it. What do you do besides enjoy the view? What do you do with it? What do you do with it? I'm telling you, church-based religion is of the devil. It's always been of the devil. The Bible says those gods of the ancient world were demons. They'd speak. They reveal things. They do miracles. But they were demons. <laughs> These churches came from the same spirit. And we don't need it. Oh, God, I wanted you to know how washed I am from even the idea of a competition. There is none. There is nothing, no wisdom, no counsel, no understanding against God. Amen. We just want to understand Him. Yes. We want to know Him. Yes. God will change anything. We'll do anything. Yes. This isn't a church-based religion. This is Christ-based religion. We don't compare ourselves with those who don't know God. We compare ourselves with Christ. What does He have to give us? Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh. I wish I could get it all out. <laughs> but that's the key to the whole thing. Church-based religion has never been of God. It's always been demonic. It's never saved a soul. It's never taught anybody the knowledge of God. It's never delivered you from a problem. Fifty years after Constantine, the emperors that were then in charge, and they had several spread out over the empire, took them 50 years, but they finally got there. Anybody who would not submit to Christianity was banned. Yeah. No meetings or the building would be confiscated and given to the Catholic Church. Could not teach anything other than what they taught. This is by law. I just read it today. By law, you could not meet and a death penalty if you even were caught hiding a book by the guy that taught against the Trinity. Death penalty. You couldn't, if you didn't teach that doctrine, if you didn't believe that doctrine, you could not make out a will. The government took over everything you've got as soon as you died. On and on and on. That demonic thing is not of Christ. Amen. Never has been. It's all been a myth to start with. From the get-go. And it doesn't go back to Jesus. He didn't start this mess. He came to deliver us from church religion. So let's walk in it, God, with all our being. Walk in the newness of life. What do we do with this? I don't know. I don't know. It's just like a weight here. That weight of the glory of God. Now, who can? Who wants it? Who wants it? Who wants it? Who wants it? Oh, God, pour it out on us. We'll take it, God. God, thank you for bringing us here. Now, God, carry us on. God, fulfill your word. Reveal your purpose, oh God, and show us the way. Get it to us, oh God. Show us what to do, how to do it, when, why. Oh God, please yourselves among us. Oh God, please yourselves. And let us please you in all our ways, oh God. Let us please you in all our ways. Oh God, 